I think that each body is unique. <laughs> I mean, like literally every single body is unique. Every cell in our body is unique and that not everything works for everyone all the time. I'm Luke Story. For the past 22 years, I've been relentlessly committed to my deepest fashion, designing the ultimate lifestyle based on the most powerful principles of spirituality, health, psychology, and personal development. The Lifestylist Podcast is a show dedicated to sharing my discoveries and the experts behind them with you. Since I'm such a devotional biohacker, people always ask me, okay, Luke, what's your number one biohack? And as boring as it might be, I have to say it's sleep. Now, sleep isn't the most sexy biohack. Well, it depends on who you're sleeping with, I suppose. But it's kind of boring. It's not a magic pill. It's not that exciting, but it's really, really important. And one thing that ruins your sleep more than anything is being exposed to unnatural artificial blue light at night, which is your computer, your phone, any any lighting that you go into in any building in the world that's not red or amber is trashing your melatonin and thus ruining your sleep. So that's why I love our friends over at Raw Optics who make some fantastic blue blocking glasses that are not only effective at blocking the blue and even the green spectrum of light that ruins your sleep and eventually, of course, your health, but they also look cool. It's not embarrassing to wear them like it was back in the day when blue blockers first came out. I think we'd get them like at Home Depot, you know, they were super gnarly. Raw Optics makes some dope looking glasses so you can, uh, you know, feel confident and fashionable and also healthy. So if you want to check them out, go to rawoptics.com. That's spelled R-A, rawoptics.com. And if you'd like to save yourself 10%, because why not, enter the code LIFESTYLIST. So that's LIFESTYLIST at rawoptics.com. This episode would not be possible, folks, if it weren't for my friends over at Organifi.com. You can find all of their fantastic products, many of which I use on a daily basis at Organifi.com forward slash Luke. If you're looking uh, for something to start with, I would go for the green juice powder. Easy to travel with, super, super powerful and energizing and so good for you. But not only that, it actually tastes good. It's not a green powder that tastes like mold mixed with cat litter and an old shoe. It tastes freaking delicious. It's minty. It has kind of a matcha essence. No sugar. doesn't spike your blood sugar. won't take you out of ketosis. It's just badass. It's a great alternative to buying super expensive, easy to spoil green juice. Now, I love my green juice, but I really love the powder. Also, I'd love for you to try the Organifi Gold. And I'll tell you what, this stuff actually is gold. I covet my uh, bins of gold in my kitchen. I protect them. I look out for them. I only share my gold with very close friends. No, actually, I give it to everyone that comes over because it's such an easy sell. And um, one little secret that my friends and family don't know is that I don't really do anything to it. You know, it's like, they'll come over, make me that one drink. It's so delicious and I feel special. But all I literally do is put like hot water and cold water, maybe some fats into it. And, you know, I might soup it up with some other smart drugs or something weird like that. But really, it's just the gold tastes so good. It's a great base for any other type of elixir or superfood drink or even like a paleo ice cream or anything like that. So the gold and the green are amazing, but they also have some protein and probiotics and a red juice and all kinds of rad stuff over at Organifi.com forward slash Luke. Once you get there, use the code Lifestylist and save yourself a cool 15%. Organifi.com forward slash Luke. I can't believe we're almost at the end of 2019, guys. Man, thank you so much for joining me this year. If you're a longtime listener, the amount of support that I get on this show is just insane. The messages that I get on Instagram, the people in the Facebook group, the emails I get, I guess I don't hear from the people that aren't impacted, obviously. But I hear from a lot of people that are, and it's just, it's astonishing to me that just having these conversations with people that I, 
well, I don't know if I could afford to do it as often as I do <laughs> for free, not as a career, but um, these are conversations that I would want to have anyway all the time. And the fact that people like you get to listen and uh, benefit is just so meaningful to me. If you're new to the show and you stumbled across this particular episode, this is what we call a bonus solo Q&A show. So normally we have a guest that I interview or at least have a conversation with. However, today's show is unique because due to popular demand in the Lifestylist Podcast Facebook group. Uh, I've agreed to put out a couple of these a month as long as I can handle doing it. And uh, I always tend to put these off because they're much more involved and require um, a lot more thought and effort on my part in many cases than sitting down and having a very natural conversation with the guest. In fact, uh, I'm just about to my deadline on this particular episode. I just landed in Costa Rica yesterday to take some time to heal and go inward with some ayahuasca at the Solterra Healing Center here. And so now I sit in San Jose, Costa Rica in my hotel room and I'm going, man, ceremony starts tomorrow. I don't want to be thinking about my unfinished podcast episode. So I really worked diligently to prep my notes and I think I have a great episode in store for you. Before we jump into these listener questions that I'm going to answer, I want to invite you to join me uh, this Sunday, where we will be doing a rebroadcast episode of one I recorded in Austin last year uh, at the Beyond and Back podcast. And that was a really fun conversation to be a guest on because we talked a lot about creativity and more specifically my entire musical history. Many people don't know because I guess I don't talk about it much, but I played in bands and was a musician for around 15 years. And uh, that's what I did when I moved to Hollywood when I was 19. And I did that into my mid thirties um, and then, you know, went into fashion. So that was a really fun conversation. That's the Beyond and Back podcast. And that's a rebroadcast this uh, Sunday. Then Tuesday, I'll be back with the New Year's Eve show. Happy New Year with guess who? Gabby Bernstein. That is a fantastic conversation. I want to make sure you don't miss any of these upcoming episodes. So do yourself and me a favor and subscribe to the show. I know you listen to the show, but if you subscribe to the show, it helps me get ranked better in iTunes. Just straight up. I'm going to let you behind the curtain of what it's like to be a podcaster. There's actually two things that help your show to get ranked higher and the higher it gets ranked the more available it is in the algorithm. In other words, the more people to see it. The two things are subscribing. I always ask for that because that one's so easy. The next one is leaving a rating and review, which has actually gotten considerably easier um, with the new, at least the Apple podcast app uh, that allows you to do that. So if you want to do both as a way to celebrate um, moving toward the end of 2019 with me, that would be great. Subscribe, leave a rating and a review. And then if you want to be a super, super duper fan, share the episode with a friend. You know, I always ask for that and I hate to sound like a broken record, but um, so many people that I find that discover the show that are new listeners discovered it in that way from one of their friends or family forwarding them an episode or doing a screenshot on uh, Instagram stories, et cetera. But uh, it's been a hell of a year. I really enjoyed doing these solo shows um, as, as I don't want to say it's hard work because honestly, like nothing I do is hard work. I work hard, but it's not hard work. You feel me? I've had some really shitty jobs in my life. I think like my first one was super shitty. I was washing dishes in Basalt, Colorado in the winter which is it's freezing. And I used to be super skinny and that was before I knew how to do ice. Ice, I can't say ice. I'm, I'm lisping out on ice. That was before I knew how to do ice bath. Uh, and I just remember being freezing and getting out of that fucking pizza parlor where I was the dishwasher and trying to warm myself up by smoking weed and weed doesn't really make you warm. And you know, then I would drink and I couldn't get home. It was just... It was horrible. So any job I've got now that's not doing that um, is a good day above ground. Um, but I do really work hard to put these solo shows together because I go into the Facebook group and I select my favorite questions. And, um, and then I make a manuscript so that I don't just ramble, but I really can add some value and do my best to thoughtfully answer the questions. And um, if you're a member of the Facebook group, I'm so happy to have you there. If you're not, all you have to do is just log into Facebook and search the Lifestylist podcast. 
you'll find our private group where you can request to join. We'll let you in. You can post questions in there. And most of the time, the questions are answered quite expertly by the other members of the group. And from time to time, I'll dip into the group and leave comments or shoot a link in there or something. But more and more, it's kind of a self-regulated group. And then how I answer your questions is I go in there and I capture them and I bring them into Evernote and I add them to my show manuscripts and I answer them right here on the show. So if you want your question answered, um, you know, you'll be famous on the podcast world. No, I do. I, I like to say people's names and be like, this question's from Joe, you know, and answer your question. It's kind of funny. It reminds me of like an old school radio program where people would call in with their questions and then, you know, you'd be excited if... If the, uh, you know, the, the host mentioned you, no, I don't know if you're excited if I mention you, but at least I'm enjoying myself, right? Uh, before I get into answering these questions, some of the questions are psychological, some of them are spiritual, some of them are metaphysical, some of them are about health and biohacking. A lot of the questions are asking for health advice. So that being said, I always like to preface these solo episodes by saying, uh, it's always best to see a healthcare professional when you're having physical challenges. Um, now, there are a lot of different routes you can go. I always recommend starting with functional medicine and healers and all of this kind of stuff. And then as a last resort, doing drugs and surgery. That's just how I roll. I just like to remind you that you are listening to someone with a grand total of zero degrees or professional credibility or education. I have, however, been self-educating experientially for over 23 years on all things natural healing, anti-aging, spirituality, etc. So I love sharing my experience, but just know that it's only my experience. It's completely anecdotal. And um, if you have something very serious going on, I highly suggest that you see a doctor or someone who has been trained to treat you. Our first question is from Margisella. I hope I pronounced that right. She says, how do you create a community in real life of people that are into all of this stuff, the biohacking and all of these things? And I'm going to do my best to uh, give you some pointers on how to do that. My first piece of advice here would to be find local events and meetups where like-minded people uh, hang out. One of the ways that you could do that just off, off the top of my head is to search for people um, on social media by using geotag. So if there's a place in your town or city that does any biohacking stuff like red light therapy or infrared saunas or cryotherapy, spas, um, that kind of thing, look on the geotag and start connecting with people who hang out at that place. You know, in Los Angeles and New York City, there are a lot of these kind of health clubs and biohacking, anti-aging centers and things like that. Um, so it's much easier. I'm not sure where Margisella lives. I'm thinking she might live somewhere where there's fewer people that are into that publicly. But finding any kind of events or meetups like that would be a great place to start. And then getting involved in things like yoga classes, you know, doing, um, doing yourself the favor of experimenting a bit. And if you're someone that practices yoga, go to a different class in a different studio, you know, just start bouncing around town a little bit and also look out for any meditation classes. You know, this is a great place to meet people that are into natural healing, well-being, mindfulness, etc. And the same thing would be said of sound baths and breathwork classes. These things are popping up all over, not just in the, you know, the hippie centers of, of um, you know, Venice, California and uh, places like that. But I'm surprised. I meet people kind of now from all over the U.S. and in some cases all over the world that go and do breath work and sound bath. Even when I was in London for the Health Optimization Summit, I mean, there's like biohacking clinics there. There's a great place called LMS Wellness that's this really exclusive high-end kind of functional medicine and biohacking club. And then everyone out there is doing sound baths and Kundalini yoga and breath work. And I think there's a lot more out there than people probably realize. And listen, if you can't find one in the city you're in, start one, learn to meditate, start a meetup of people that want to get together and meditate. Meditation in a group setting, in my experience, is infinitely more powerful because of the hive mind, the collective consciousness that is activated when you get a group of people setting the same intention and going through the same uh, exercises, right? So find yoga, meditation, sound baths, breath work, 
and then go to health seminars and meet people. I mean, really the basis of this podcast, you guys, and so many of the amazing people I've been able to connect with have been people that I've met at the Bulletproof Upgrade Labs conference, at Paleo FX, at uh, the aforementioned uh, London Health Optimization Summit. When you go to these summits and seminars in the health industry, even some of the product shows and things like that, where people are just there vending, uh, meeting the vendors and just the people behind these different brands is incredibly powerful when it comes to networking. And also, you'd be surprised how easy it is to just walk up to the speakers I mean, when I started this podcast, some of the first guests that I got were just people that I went up to and just like, hey, I have a podcast. You want to be on my show? And they say, yeah. I mean, like it was like Dave Asprey and Ben Greenfield and um, Daniel Vitalis. These were people that I would go see speak on stage. Jack Cruz, another one, David Wolf, Neil Strauss. I mean, these are people that I built relationships with just from going to seminars and kind of hanging out and at first being sort of a groupie and then, you know, working my way up to being more of a peer. So um, there's a lot to be said for just going where large groups of people are all interested in the same thing. Uh, The next thing would be going on yoga and health retreats. You know, this is a big business now. There's a company called Wanderlust that does events all over the world. There's many other companies that are doing these yoga retreats, um, detox retreats, fast retreats, you know, where you go away with a group of people who are into healing, into growth, and you spend time with them. Um, And this also goes for things like, you know, the Joe Dispenza workshops and Tony Robbins events and things like that, where people are getting together to work on themselves. I think that's how you build community. And some of these people are going to live in your city, some of them not. Um, I find that I have friends kind of all over the world now due to social media and just traveling a bit. And then I have my core group of friends in Los Angeles, of course, or in Southern California, But I think it's easier than some people think to build community. You just have to make a commitment to do it and just think about where those people are. And then, of course, mustering up the courage to reach out to people and follow up after these events. So if you met someone at a sound bath and you got their card or you followed them on Instagram or something like that, you know, then you have to sort of have the wherewithal to do your due diligence and follow up with them and really stay in touch. And I know that can be really hard to do because we all get busy and life goes on and you're all excited when you're on the retreat or at the event and you know you think you're going to be best friends forever and then you get home and you have a stack of business cards on your desk. I'm speaking of myself right now and you look at them every day and you're like, ah, I should email all those people. Nope, I'm getting too many emails already. Uh, so it does take a bit of commitment, but it is completely possible. And um, on that note, you know, with the yoga and health retreats and things like that, plant medicine ceremonies are also for some people, not all people, a good way to really get to know, uh, get to know a new group of people and really build a tribe to build a community. Now I said some people, not all people, because I truly believe that plant medicines and psychedelics, which are, can be the same, but also, um, can be kind of, um, uh, you can differentiate them in in many ways, um, having to do with what the substance is and the type of ceremony, whether it be a traditional, uh, more shamanic ceremony or something that's more clinical coming out of the world of therapy and psychotherapy, et cetera. Uh, many people are using plant medicines and psychedelics for really great positive things um, having to do with healing. But I know so many people uh, that are in the plant medicine scene that kind of know each other from that seam and, um, as you might expect, have really tight bonds with one another. Now, that hasn't really been my scene per se, because I'm someone who's been technically, for all intents and purposes, uh, stone cold sober for so many years up until last year when I went to Rhythmia and did ayahuasca four times. But I'm not someone who's going to Burning Man and like taking E and, you know, all night not my scene at all. Nothing against it. Like, go for it. Go nuts. I, I don't judge anyone that does any drugs, drinks, does anything. As long as you don't hurt other people, um, I think every human should be free to do pretty much whatever they want. I'm what you call a uh, libertarian, right? So um, that said, though, I just haven't really been in that. I didn't really know about it. It just was like not on my radar because I'm just a guy who does Vedic meditation and does my biohacking and 
kind of just do things on the natch and um, getting into the whole plant medicine scene was just not really my bag. And I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily into it now, but I do see the value in it. And um, as I record this right now, I sit in Costa Rica about to go do another four ceremonies. And I'm sure that I'll meet people there that I bond with and may or may not build lasting relationships with them. But I know having so many friends that, you know, they go to the Wachuma ceremony, they do the peyote uh, ceremonies, they do the ayahuasca. um, What's the other one? The um, mushrooms, you know, all this kind of stuff. These are tight knit communities of people that um, in my experience, the people I know are doing it very consciously and thoughtfully and following tradition and set and setting and, I think if you can find people that are approaching some of these things in that way and it suits your lifestyle and your beliefs and all of that, that that can be a great way to meet kind of an underground community and build a tribe um, based on that. Again, not for everyone, but for some, as, as, as I have observed, it's quite powerful. And lastly, I'll recommend that you reach out to people in our Facebook group. So any of these questions that I'm answering Um, they're all coming from the Facebook group. So if you're in there, there are people like raise your hand to be like, Hey, does anyone live in Cincinnati or wherever you live? Let's hang out. Let's do cryotherapy. Let's geek out at the health food store, you know, whatever. Let's go outdoors and do some breath work and some yoga. I was about to say, let's go to the gym, but I'm like, ah, I went to the gym in my hotel today and I'm like, I'm going to really crush it. I'm going to work out. And I just, it wasn't even that I minded working out. I'm just like, it's in a gym, dude. They got like rap music playing. Oh my God, I can't, just, I can't do it. I can't, I can't do the rap music, guys. I'm just, I just never have been able to, never will be able to. Oh my God, the rap music, the LED lighting and the music's like bumping. So I can't even put on my headphones and like eclipse it with some mantra or something. I just don't get gyms. I get the purpose, like being in shapes, rad. Moving your body, rad. Gyms, not so much, uh, Maybe I I need to come up with my own chain of gyms, right? How about this for an entrepreneurial venture where it's like incense and candles and it's super chill. It looks like a, a, you know, meditation studio. And then you can go work out in there and keep it super chill. I don't think that would fly. People generally like to get pumped. Um, So maybe not go to the gym and meet people because there's going to be people there that are into fitness, but not necessarily health and biohacking. Fitness is in its own category. Many people into biohacking and health are also into fitness, but I know a lot of people that are into fitness that are still eating like shit and, you know, listening to rap music. Uh, Anyway... (laughs) No offense if you like rap music. Go nuts. Just not when you're around me. Okay. So uh, unless it's NWA, that's the only rap band I ever like. And I'm aging myself. But for some reason, I really... Easy e dude, he was my guy. This is back in like 1990, I think I was listening to NWA for a spell there. Next question is by Lisa. She said, Luke, what is the brain mapping treatment you've been doing and has it helped? And I think what Lisa is probably referring to would be something called neurofeedback, which I do at a place uh, called Peak Brain Institute in West LA. They have a number of different locations and you can also do it remotely. You can buy their system and they train you uh, and you could do it you know, just about anywhere in the world. It's fantastic. But before I get into that, I just want to preface it by saying also that 2020 is the year of the brain. There's like a couple big goals I have in 2020. Uh, One of them is like finally really focusing on fixing my brain as you'll hear as I continue to answer this question. So uh, you can look forward to a lot of episodes about not just consciousness and spirituality, which I've talked a lot about, but literally fixing the brain. Because I'm discovering as I get deeper and deeper into this, that prayer and meditation is only going to get you so far if you've got brain damage and PTSD and ADD and, you know, all this kind of stuff and trauma, you know? So, um, a lot of which I have, um, (laughs) so all of, all of the above to some degree or another. And and many of us do, if you're listening to the show and you resonate with the shit that I cover on the show, you might too. Uh, but she's referring to neurofeedback and neurofeedback is clinically proven. And this is not a theory, but it has been proven, uh, to treat PTSD, insomnia, trauma, anxiety, depression, ADD, ADHD, 
Uh, as I said, I do my neurofeedback at Peak Brain with Dr. Andrew Hill, who's a PhD cognitive neuroscientist, very bright guy. If you want to learn about that, you're going to have to scroll back to episode 30 where I interview Dr. Hill. I was also a guest on his podcast called Head First back in 2018. And uh, Dr. Hill is just brilliant and the positive effects he's had on people's lives with his type of neurofeedback. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. Um, there's a lot of ways that are great. There are some that aren't so great and or at least not that effective. He's really got it dialed in with what he does there. And um, I started going there, I guess, a couple of years ago and I was having a lot of cognitive problems and I didn't know at the time I was living next to these cell towers. I know I'm like a broken record. You've probably heard me talk about it before, but it really was a fucking sucky ass time in my life. And I really got hurt by that radiation exposure and specifically my brain and my eyes. So I didn't know that at the time I was doing all this neurofeedback. I just knew I had this insane brain fog and vertigo and dizziness and I was just a train wreck. And so Dr. Hill really helped me with his neurofeedback. And then I found out about the cell towers and I moved and then I kept doing the neurofeedback and I went in for another QEEG, which is what Lisa is referring to, I think, with the brain mapping. Um, the QEEG is just a way that you look at your brain and see what brainwave activity is happening where. And so when I got my first um, QEEG done there, my brain was not in great shape. Dr. Hill was not impressed. Despite all my efforts of biohacking and all the things I've been doing, my brain's just been through a lot from head trauma to extreme levels of drug abuse throughout my childhood, adolescence, teen years, etc. Not proud of that, not ashamed of that. It's just a fact of my personal experience. Um, but when I went back, I think it was two years later for another scan with Dr. Hill, he found that my brain had improved by three standard deviations, which is absolutely impossible to do by just living your best life and thinking positive. So it was a really great affirmation that not only had the neurofeedback that I'd been doing at Peak Mind been effective, but also all of the other health interventions and biohacks that I continue to practice in my life. So everything I've been doing is working. So what you do in a neurofeedback session is you sit and watch the screen and you watch your little car go and you stay in a relaxed state while staying focused. And then you hear bells and whistles and you're seeing the movement of the car, or whatever visual you're watching, and that sends feedback to your brain on how it's behaving and trains your brain to upregulate certain brain waves and downregulate others. So you might go in there with really high beta and you're very stressed out, but you're also very focused. You don't want to live in high beta all the time. You want to be able to access alpha waves or a combination of different waves or even theta waves, et cetera. And so what neurofeedback does is it trains your brain to work within a certain range of frequencies. And it knows how to do that because it's instantaneously reading the frequencies that are being emitted electrically from your scalp. It's really interesting. The brain waves that your brain creates actually produce a signal that penetrates your skull and show up on your scalp, which then get read into this computer. It's really, really fascinating stuff. Additionally, a few years ago, I went through something called 40 Years of Zen, which was developed uh, well, in partnership with Dave Asprey, he since took 40 years of Zen on his own. Um, but it was at a institute, uh, that I forget the name of, uh, alpha um, shit. Sorry. Can't, I haven't had enough neurofeedback, so I can't remember. It was a few years ago, but, uh, anyway, it was another center that Dave had partnered with in Sedona and in Vancouver. And then eventually they parted ways and Dave just took his 40 years of Zen training and now has a center, I believe, outside of Seattle. And I've not done the new version of 40 Years of Zen, but I have talked to Dave Asprey about it, interviewed him uh, recently on a show uh, about the updates there, and they're doing all kinds of nootropics and a lot of different things for the brain. So that sounds interesting too. I'd like to go up and, and try the, the new upgraded version of 40 Years of Zen, but there are many different people out there practicing uh, neurofeedback, and um, most of them are quite effective. So that's what that's all about. Um, 
Back to the brain, I recently had something called a SPECT scan done by Dr. Daniel Amen at Amen Clinic in Orange County and uh, had some bad news there. Uh, now, while the Dr. Hill's test showed a lot of improvement in my brain, there was no before and after with um, Dr. Amen's scan. So I'm guessing if I had gone to him 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, he would have you know, been shocked to see that my brain looked like Swiss cheese. I'm sure that I've improved it a lot, but when he looked at my brain scan, he saw some problems. Uh, one of them being an overactive amygdala, which is an indication of trauma, and God knows I've had a lot of that. Um, he found an underactive cerebellum and a fairly sizable area in my left frontal lobe, which means that um, it looks like a hole, but it's not a hole. It's just the way the scan works. It's getting very little blood flow. So the way Dr. Amen put it was that my brain is quite sleepy. And to be honest, although I feel like I perform at a fairly high level for a guy that's 49 and has been through a lot of shit in my life, um, I still have times where just words escape me and I feel sort of foggy. And uh, I just feel like I could be more <laughs> effective in terms of like my brain function. And I'm not being self-deprecating or putting myself down. I think I'm a fairly bright guy. I'm doing okay. I'm helping a lot of people in the world. I'm happy with who I am. However, it does irritate me that my brain is not beautiful on a scan and isn't performing as well as I would like it to. So after that brain scan, one of the things that Dr. Amen recommended as a protocol was to do a series of hyperbaric oxygen chamber treatments. He recommended between 60 and 100. And I've done a lot of oxygen therapy in the past myself for different things, not necessarily for my brain. I also very recently did uh, a complete episode with Dr. Scott Share, who's my personal doctor, and he also happens to be one of the world's foremost experts in hyperbaric oxygen treatments. Um, but I've not done them 60 at a, in a row or 100 in a row. And, um, you know, this can get quite expensive. They can be anywhere between 150 and $400 a session. So I'm starting to do the math on that. And I just went, you know what? I'm just getting my own chamber. So Merry Christmas to me. Uh, I've got one on the way to Los Angeles as we speak, and I'm going to be in that chamber until my brain works right, whether that takes 100 times or 200 times. So I'm going to work with Dr. Scott Scher on a protocol. I'm going to up my fish oil game. Dr. Amen swears by fish oil. This is very confusing to me because there are so many conflicting messages in the uh, biohacking and health guru scene fish oil is bad, then it's good, then it's bad, then it's good. Like I'm very confused. You got the krill oil. You've, I don't, it's just, you know, the fermented cod liver oil. I swear to God, you can Google this shit and like every single link tells you something different. So I don't know, but I have started taking uh, Amon's fish oil. He swore to me that it was free of toxins, PCBs, heavy metals, and that it was not rancid. This is an issue with fish oil. I have not noticed that I burp up disgusting fish taste or smells on the Amen Clinic's uh, version of fish oil. So, so far, so good. And based on him working with thousands of athletes and high performers and getting their brains back online by taking a lot of fish oil and doing the oxygen therapy, I'm going to go for that and uh, see what happens. However, here's some of the other brain work that I'm getting into and might recommend. Uh, the next one is getting really deep into the Joe Dispenza books and meditations. He's got these great guided meditations where you use breath and harmonizing your energy centers or chakras to change your brain. So it's a way of using breath and intention to affect neuroplasticity and actually change who you are by changing the way your brain works. I'm doing his week-long intensive in February in Indian Wells, California. I was lucky to get into that one to do further work on the dome. I, I want to straighten this thing out. Um, I also use an app called Mind Movies to retrain my brain with the goals and dreams I want to manifest per Dispenza's recommendations, kind of part of his protocol. I also recently did something called Psych K Therapy, which Bruce Lipton um, turned me on to that rewires subconscious trauma as does EMDR. So those are other ways you can work with neuroplasticity. I've also been experimenting with microdosing LSD and psilocybin mushrooms. 
and not just taking them for the nootropic effect, but really working on some deep meditations on the days that I do that. Ben Greenfield and I talked a lot about that on this week's podcast, episode number 250. You can learn a lot more of the science about that. This isn't like taking LSD to party. This is micro, micro, micro. When I say microdose, it's not even a discernible, it's barely discernible as a feeling. It's not like, oh, did I take LSD today? Yeah, it's, it's, you can barely tell. But there is a lot of research uh, that would indicate that um, microdoses of psychedelics do have a positive effect on your brain. Uh, I think a lot of that research is still in its infancy, but it's looking quite positive. And I have to say, subjectively, when it comes to just feeling like my brain is turned on and on point, I have found both of those things to be very useful, as have a number of other nootropics. Again, go back and listen to Tuesday's show with Ben Greenfield. We cover all of that stuff. Um, to the nth degree. So definitely get on that. I've also been doing something called DNRS, Dynamic Neural Reprogramming System, developed by someone named Annie Hopper. And uh, this is something you do, uh, exercises and uh, ways that you work with a partner and kind of running through these different drills and things like that, which heal your amygdala and um, your limbic system actually entirely. And the theory there is that when we experience different forms of trauma, not just you know trauma of being beat when you're a kid or something like that, but car accidents and all sorts of things like that can induce trauma, that the limbic system gets damaged and it gets stuck in this loop where it starts spitting out cortisol and adrenaline all the time and you can't make it stop. And this is the root cause of uh, so many issues like chemical sensitivity and EMF sensitivity. And um, I don't think that I have extreme chemical sensitivity, but God damn, I got some EMF sensitivity. So I'm hoping that DNRS can help me with that. So I plan to go to one of their intensives in 2020 and I already bought Annie's online course, which I'm uh, going to set some days aside to do very soon and um, hoping to get Annie on the show one of these days as well. Oh, and by the way, I don't think I mentioned it, but we do have an upcoming episode and a, a really cool YouTube video of my whole brain scan experience and interview with Dr. Daniel Amen. So that'll be coming up really soon in 2020. Next, there's a really incredible device called the Lucia Light that uh, I found out about a couple of years ago and I've been chasing it down. I finally found the US rep and uh, <laughs> she brought this thing over to my house and it's just the coolest thing ever. This psychedelic light experience that alters your brain chemistry and your ability to access deep learning and creativity. It's very similar to taking a psychedelic, but you just lay under this light and your brain goes crazy in the best possible way. Um, I've got an episode all about this light coming out very soon as well, but it was worth mentioning here because I did see a lot of value in this kaleidoscope effect that Joe Dispenza also talks a lot about and that that effect is produced by the Lucia light. So I'm starting to put all these pieces together between ayahuasca, microdosing, psychedelics, the plant medicines, all of that brain healing combined with some of these technologies and then some very natural meditations and visualization and invoking positive feelings in your heart and in your mind and I really believe that a combination of all of these things can really transform uh, one's mind. Another thing I've been doing brain-wise is the Zing Performance software as covered in episode 246 with Winford Door. And this brings your cerebellum back online. And what was interesting about this is that I interviewed uh, Winford about his Zing Performance training for the cerebellum before I went to Dr. Daniel Amen for the scan and sure enough, Dr. Amen was like, dude, your cerebellum is asleep. So I've been doing the Zing performance uh, exercises. That's uh, some software that you put on your computer and your phone. Actually, shit, I need to do it tonight. Hopefully it's not too late. You do it twice a day. It takes about 10 minutes. I've been doing it mm, almost every day, at least once. I, I've got to really step it up, but it's kind of, you know, it's hard to fit all the things in. We'll be right back at you after this brief but important announcement. Yo, I am super pumped to share with you beekeepersnaturals.com. Now, if you heard episode 175 with founder and CEO Carly Stein, you know exactly what I'm talking about. 
What I'm talking about are the highest quality bee products in the world from Beekeepers Naturals. Now, I've been using bee products for a long time. Back in the 90s, I was rocking like the bee pollen and, and you know, using kind of gourmet honey over the years and things like that. But until that interview, honestly, I had no idea of the superpowers and the variety of different bee products. So not only did these guys make the cleanest, most organic, most potent bee products, they also have the widest variety of products. So whether it's propolis, which helps you with the immune system, um, soothing scratchy throats, it's really potent stuff, or the bee pollen, which is a superfood with vitamins and nutrients and gives you energy. It has amino acids and protein, whether it's the raw honey, the royal jelly. Uh, they even have a tonic for your brain. I mean, they have a lot of great products over there. So if you're not hip to the power of bee products as a superfood, I want to highly recommend that you get over to beekeepersnaturals.com. And honestly, if you want to just learn all about bees in the industry and how it's done and how it's done right for ecology and for the environment, definitely go back and listen to episode 175. It's a, it's a great episode and the founder Carly is just brilliant and she's running a really great operation over there. So I'm very happy to support them on the show. And uh, like all the stuff I always talk about, I use them every day. In fact, I use it too much because I run out of it. Like when I interviewed her, I was like, so I do like a couple tablespoons of the bee powered, which is the really potent one that combines all of the superfoods in the hive into one product. She's like, dude, the dose for that is half a teaspoon once a day. You're tripping. But, you know, I'm hardcore because uh, it just tastes delicious and it gives you like instant energy. So definitely get over to beekeepersnaturals.com. When you're there, if you enter the code LIFESTYLIST, that's one word, LIFESTYLIST, you'll save 15% off your order. So go to beekeepersnaturals.com, enter the code LIFESTYLIST. And now back to the interview. So those are some of the things that I've been doing or plan on doing in 2020 when it comes to neuroplasticity, healing the brain, and ultimately healing the mind. You know, the mind and the brain to me being sort of two different things, the brain being the receiver and transmitter of mind, mind being universal mind, universal consciousness. So the brain is an access point to consciousness in my paradigm, in my way of seeing things. And so the healthier we can make our brains, the more access to higher levels of consciousness we can get to. And that's really the purpose of my life. But the thing I'm perhaps most excited about is working with Dr. Lana Bach-Morrow. She's a PhD neuroscientist, and she's developed this very powerful brain training software program called Think Interfaces. And we had a call the other night, and of course, she's going to be on the podcast soon, like everyone cool and brilliant. Uh, and she explained to me how this thing works, the software, and it's just, I mean, it's insane. And she sent me some videos of um, children she's working with that have autism and learning disabilities. And you see them before and after doing the training with her. And it's just, it's like your jaw drops on the ground. It's just insane. So uh, Dr. Lana, if you hear this, thank you so much uh, for the offer of working with me and helping to bring my brain 100% online. And I can't wait to, uh, to go there with you. So, you know, the brain piece, I'll end with this. We've got the physical brain and then we have the metaphysical beyond the physical, right? And so I'm into working on both, working on mindset, um, negativity, fasting, not allowing myself to think negatively, not using negative words, not complaining, not bitching, not whining, not being a victim, not blaming other people, not criticizing other people, not talking shit about anyone else, not talking shit about myself. The only thing I'll talk shit about is rap music. I shouldn't even do that though, because that's bad for my brain, but really not just like, oh, I'll think positive in some kind of Pollyanna manner. I'm talking about like not thinking positive, but only thinking positive. Now that's a tall order. I'm sure that I'll never achieve that with 100% um, efficiency, but that's what I'm going for is really working on the metaphysical side of positive thinking, positive thoughts, positive visions for the future, sending loving, kind, compassionate energy toward all of life and everyone in it all the time. That's the goal. However, uh, upgrading the hardware, which is the physical brain, is a really important part of that. So 
Rest assured, folks, you're going to be hearing a lot about that in the coming year. All right, on to the next question. Sarah says, I want to hear your thoughts on the Epstein-Barr virus. Now, admittedly, Sarah, I don't know a lot about viruses, but I do know that they are quite rampant today and that they need to be dealt with. So when it comes to dealing with a viral infection, personally, my very first move would be getting very thorough blood work done and using a really solid functional medicine doctor on board to look at that blood work and come up with a treatment protocol. And of course, all doctors, be they allopathic, Western, or functional medicine, or integrative doctors, are going to have different opinions on what might be an effective way to treat those viral infections. And in some cases, drugs probably work. That's just always my last resort. So I'm going to take a stab at this and just give you a couple tips. As I said, it's not something I know a lot about, but I do see this coming up more and more. And I think the Epstein-Barr virus is probably at the root of a lot of our problems. And that brings me to the first obvious topic to talk about, and that would be the medical medium. Now, I've listened to a lot of his stuff. I, I think I listened to his audio book and a lot of his podcasts and things like that. And His confidence, I think his name is Anthony, his confidence is so compelling that you're just like, I'm on board with all this. He has to be right. And, you know, Jack Cruz is like that. My friend um, Matt Blackburn is like that. However, you know, and and these are some of my favorite people, but I think a lot of the times when somebody's just has a high degree of certainty and passion we just sort of blindly believe whatever they say and think like, oh, they're right about everything just because they're right about one thing, right? So I think that each body is unique. (laughs) I mean, like literally every single body is unique. Every cell in our body is unique and that not everything works for everyone all the time. So you can listen to some of these people that are are highly confident in their point of view, but no one's right all the time either. Um, So I'm not going to discount the medical medium. I think a lot of his stuff is fascinating and very impressive, but a lot of it I'm also kind of confused by because it brings me back to 1991, like when we were all just juicing celery and thinking we could fix ourselves by being raw vegans and then everyone got sick and wrecked their hormones. So it's like, you know, I've seen all of these crazy fad diets come and go from carnivore to paleo to vegan to raw to this to that. It's like, dude, what you eat is just, to me, has got to be based on what your body wants and what's available and what you can afford, you know? And generally speaking, when it comes to eating, I just say eat an anti-inflammatory diet. And if you follow the bullet, the bulletproof diet to me is probably the best overall diet for everyone. Um, You can find the bulletproof diet infographic online. And to me, that's been very useful. So I digress here. I want to get back to the medical medium. Now, I love a lot of his stuff, but as I said, it was kind of like, uh, we already did all this, dude, and this didn't work. We were still sick. Um, You know, all of the juicing and stuff like that. And the real issue I have with a lot of juices and, you know, I love the juice press in New York. Marcus, the owner has been on the show. My friend Khalil from Sun Life Organics, they've been on the show. Uh, You know, I go to Erwan. Sometimes I buy a $15 green juice. Like I get it. But here's the thing is that our soil is sick and even, you know, organically grown commercial produce is mostly grown with NPK fertilizers and frankly, poisonous irrigation water in many cases. And so it's not that these vegetables are bad for you in the mega doses that someone like the medical medium recommends with his celery juice protocol. It's just that they're not natural vegetables anymore. If you have your own biodynamic farm and you have animals on that farm and compost and you're fertilizing everything and you're growing it yourself and you have healthy soil, I would say go nuts, juice every vegetable you can, just drink gallons of it every day like the medical medium recommends. But oh my God, I mean, I don't know. I'm just not sold on putting that much fertilizer, potassium-based fertilizer in your body. I mean, it can wreck your minerals and I mean, this iron and just, it gets crazy. That said, (laughs) as my disclaimer, and Anthony, if you ever hear the show, please don't not do my show because I think you're kind of crazy. I think you're onto some really cool shit also. So anyone that knows him, tell him to come on the show and we'll talk about these things and maybe he can explain it. But what I do think is rings very true with medical medium stuff 
is that the Epstein-Barr virus is at the root of so many other co-infections and so many other issues that come downstream. So while I think his EBV protocol sounds a little extreme and he's got, you know, this 30 day thing, whatever it is. um, And it sounds like something we've kind of all done before in the health scene, like be a raw vegan for 30 days and it'll fix you forever. It's a good detox, maybe a good fast. And then you have to get back to your normal life, um, you know, with bone broth and all the other really nutritionally dense foods, oysters, you know, grass fed meat, organ meats, et cetera. But I will say this, Uh, his theory on the viral load being the catalyst for so many other things really rings true to me based on everything I've ever learned and heard of. And he also has an apparent, apparently incredible track record of fixing and getting rid of this virus. I mean, I guess you never really get rid of a virus because there's always the DNA of the virus in your body from what I understand. But um, he's not only confident, but there are legions of people that have followed his juicing protocol and his Epstein-Barr thing and are cool and they got rid of it. So honestly, if I had it, Epstein-Barr right now, if I was diagnosed through blood work that was verifiable, um, I would probably do the medical medium protocol for like a month. I probably would. And I would just be doing everything I could to balance out my minerals that are being trashed by the fertilized organic produce and the really shitty water that that produce is made of. And you can see how much water, by the way, is in produce. Take a cucumber, a carrot, and a piece of celery and run it through a juicer. Like all that juice you get, where did that water come from, right? Just something to think about. Again, not to be paranoid, but just to build a little bit of awareness there. But I would try that, okay? So that there's the medical medium, like... EBV whole thing. That's as far as I've been able to get with it. I think there's some good there, but I don't know that it's the complete answer. Uh, Again, in my uh, own life, what I would do then is, or at the same time, is I would go absolutely fucking nuts with ozone. I'd get a medical grade ozone generator. Like I I have one at home. You can find them at lukestory.com forward slash store. I link out to the best ones in the world. Uh, I would do sessions at least twice a day, uh, rectally, If you have a vagina, I would do them uh, vaginally and also in your ear canals. Ozone kills all viruses, bacteria, et cetera, on contact, period. So it's just incredibly powerful. Now, if you're really sick and you've got just tons of co-infections, bacterial, fungal, viral, et cetera, you can go to a clinic that does 10-pass ozone treatments um, and get that stuff in your veins. I was doing this for a while. Um, I found it to be very effective. I didn't realize at the time that I was I had cell tower sickness and that's what was wrong with me. So it wasn't that effective, but I'm sure it cleaned up my blood quite a bit. It can get quite expensive, but very effective if you're having an acute um, you know, viral situation like that. If you want to really learn about the power of ozone, I would uh, suggest studying Frank Schallenberger's work. I've mentioned him a lot on the podcast. Uh, he's got a really tiny little easy to read book you can get on Amazon called uh, The Ozone Miracle. And he explains all the different applications and it's a great introduction. I mean, there's a lot more to it, but he's kind of, you know, the, the, the grandfather of ozone as it were. And, um, for viruses, I think this has got to be part of your protocol. You can also get, um, ozonated olive oil capsules that you can swallow. You can drink ozonated water. You can get, um, ozonative olive oil suppositories that you shove up the old (laughs) before you go to sleep to kill any, uh, infection in there. So there's a lot of different ways you can get ozone in your body. And if I had viruses, I'd be putting it everywhere and anywhere every single day. Uh, There's also a lot of frequency-based technologies that can be really effective for getting rid of viruses. So things like the amp coil, the biocharger, and other PMF and RIFE-based devices can be very useful. Now, some of these get into a little bit of the cosmic woo-woo land and use muscle testing to find the frequencies to see what works. And I don't know that these frequency technologies are that scientifically vetted, but they do have a long, long history of helping people with all sorts of things from cancer to you name it. So I, I recommend that we don't discount the frequency and PEMF-based technologies because they've been known to be very effective for many different infections, viruses included. 
Now, there is one supplement that I've been using for a while that can be very effective. It's called Loricidin. That's spelled L-A-U-R-I-C-I-D-I-N, and it comes from lauric acid. It's the brand name for something called monolaurin. It's a derivative of the lauric acid found in coconut oil. It can be great for your gut. It's also a very powerful antiviral. So I take this stuff all the time for immune system support and for gut health. So that might be something you can check out as well. And so I think that's kind of all I've got on the virus tip. I know this is something people struggle with a lot. Hopefully some of that information will lead you in the right direction. And also remember that when I mention products on the podcast that I use or am a fan of, that most of the time you can find them at lukestory.com forward slash store. And I always like to send people to the store because I've worked very hard to curate the best of the best there. I've neatly categorized everything to make it easy for you to find. And I also have great discounts in many uh, cases when you find brands on there and they're discounts that are exclusive. Uh, The other great thing about that is when you shop through my store, it helps support the podcast and all of the work that I'm doing. I'm stepping up my production value with video and audio and graphic design and everything that I'm doing all the time. And not all the time, but for some of the brands that you shop through my store, I get an affiliate commission when you make a purchase there. So it's a type of commerce that I feel really good about. I get to support the best brands in the world who are doing things right. Because trust me, when it comes to the health industry and the supplement industry, there are so many super shitty ripoff brands out there. And um, I just don't like that. So I like to find the brands that are actually of high integrity and help support them. So I get to support these brands. I get to support you, save you time and energy from having to research all this stuff yourself. Cause trust me, it's a lot of work. This is what I do all the time. And then I get to make a couple of bucks to keep my ship sailing here and keep my team afloat and put food on the table. So it's a really great kind of, you know, three way beneficial relationship, not that kind of three-way dirty bastards. You know, the kind I'm talking about, the healthy kind, but seriously go to lukestory.com forward slash store and uh, you can support your health and support the work here at the same time. And of course, I'm going to remind you to join the Facebook group so you can post your questions in there. Now I know what you're thinking, you non-Facebook people, listen, don't tell anyone, but I hate Facebook. They're evil. I know. I get it. I don't like being on Facebook. I don't message people on Facebook. I've never looked at any of my friends or family's pages on Facebook. I have no idea what happens on Facebook. To me, it's just a business tool. (laughs) So if you're not on Facebook because you think Facebook sucks, dude, I get it. What you can do is you can follow me on Instagram. It's at Luke Story. Now I know it's kind of hypocritical because Instagram is owned by um, the evil masters, lords at Facebook. But uh, it's easier to use and it's just not so cumbersome and dorky. I don't know. I just find Facebook to be a complete pain in the ass. I never know what I'm looking at. Maybe it's a generational thing. Although I feel like people older than me use Facebook more than me, but I have a hard time with it. If you're on Facebook, join the group. We'll hang out in there. If you're not on Facebook, follow me on Instagram. But um, just know that I just I don't have time to do questions on Instagram. So if you're one of the many people that have DM me, hey, Luke, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? you're going to get an autoresponder that's like, sorry, I don't answer questions on DM. Join the Facebook group. I'm not trying to be precocious. Um, I just literally like, there's no way I would ever have time to answer all those messages. It would become a full-time job all day, every day. And I like answering questions, but this is an easier way to do it. So maybe if you don't have Facebook, leave me a rating and a review on iTunes. And if you ask a question in there, I'll give you top priority. Maybe I should start doing that. Just leave the Facebook group questions alone. Make everyone do reviews. And I could just bribe you into leaving tons of reviews and my show will be number one and I will rule the world. Or not. Okay. Let's thank our sponsors. First and foremost, Beekeepers Naturals, because they're so sweet. They make the honey. They make the bee products, the best in the world. No glyphosate, no toxins, badass stuff. Beekeepersnaturals.com, 15% off with the code Lifestylist. Raw Optics, super badass, very cool looking, non-douchey, blue blocking glasses. Raw Optics.com, the code is 10% off. 
The code is lifestylist, rawoptics.com. You can wear those blue blockers and not look like a chode. I promise you. Then you can get your green juice or your gold juice or your red juice in powdered form over at Organifi.com forward slash Luke. That's Organifi with an I. When you get over to Organifi.com forward slash Luke, use the code Lifestylist and save 20% off. And in closing, just know that you can find all my sponsors all the time at LukeStroy.com forward slash store. And you will also find your beloved discounts there as well. So thank you so much for joining me on episode 250. Can you believe that? 250 times I've done this in one way or another. And uh, I'm so grateful that you were able to join me. And don't forget to subscribe so you get Sunday's rebroadcast of the Beyond and Back podcast, where I talk about my entire history in music and creativity. And I think it was, I'm not to toot my own horn here, but I think it was a pretty interesting conversation because there are things I've never, ever talked about uh, on the airwaves. And then come back for the New Year's Eve show with the great and enlightened Gabby Bernstein. That is a fun conversation I don't want you to miss. God bless. Love you. Talk to you soon.